There's an artist in New York City who has created an interesting project in which she takes DNA left in public and uses it to construct a face, a real face of a stranger using 3D printing technology. Uh, we have a short video from CNN which I would like to show you right now. Of course, you can watch the full video via a link in the description. The information is fed into a computer program that generates a 3D model of a face. The way that I'm using code here is a lot like how a sketch artist would use a pencil. It takes about eight hours to print in 3D at NYU's Advanced Media Studio. Then the excess powder is removed to reveal the disembodied face from a stranger's DNA. So what she does is she goes around collecting like cigarette butts, gum people spit out, hairs from left street, behind yeah. from the street. It has to be rather fresh, not something mashed into the cement and mixed in with other things that aren't DNA. And then she takes these, extracts them, uses her own code in the program to create a face. And from that, she can glean gender, hair color, eye color. Heritage. Heritage. Relative bone structure. She, she can't tell how old they are. So everybody is aged between 20 and 40 years old. She also can't tell maybe how much you weigh. She can guess, based on your genes, that you maybe have a propensity to be very thin or maybe a little overweight. But it's that, that part is mostly a guess. And she prints these faces out paints them in, sands them down, and they're on display. Now, you may think this is kind of creepy. Okay, yeah, she wants you to think it's kind of creepy because this is to draw your attention to genetic privacy, protecting your genes. I mean, people carelessly throw cigarette butts on the ground at any time, mm -hmm. and any of those people can end up as a face in her art gallery and never know it because these... There, she'll never have names associated with these faces, And it is ever. in public. She, she's allowed to take she's it. She's within her technical right she's to do that. She's within her yeah. right to do that. And it's, yes, it's creepy, but again, let's pay more attention to our genetic privacy. There was actually um, a Supreme Court upheld a ruling, I believe, in Maryland in June of this year, in which they ruled that police were allowed to take someone's DNA even if they weren't uh, a, in, hadn't committed any kind of crime. And it's something that we should be paying more attention to. What is, our, what, are, what is our genetic material being used for? Especially as we enter an age where biometrics are becoming increasingly more important for security. Classic police procedural trick. Uh, they bring the suspect a cup of coffee, they let him drink it, they wait for him to throw it away, uh, and they get the cup. His lipstick is on the cup. Yeah, so. so then they know what's going on. Don't ever uh, t accept a cup of coffee from I'm not saying officer. be paranoid, but I am saying maybe we should think a little bit more about our genetic privacy. And maybe we should think a little bit more about littering. All these people spitting you out gum and leaving <laughs> cigarette butts everywhere. Like, that's the real problem here, I think. Good point, Nip Tim. it in the bud.